Josephine Leslie's novel, The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, tells the story of a widow living in a haunted house. The ghost tries to scare them out until they become close. It was so popular it was adapted several times. A feature film in 1947, an hour-long radio play, and a stage production in 1951. A TV series ran from 1968 to 69 on NBC and from 1969 to 70 on ABC. It had lower ratings than other supernatural shows of the time, but it had memorable characters played by expert actors. Keep watching to learn more about the Ghost and Mrs. Muir cast. Hope Lang Elise Ross Lang, who later took on the stage name Hope, was born November 28, 1933, in Reading, Connecticut. She began performing on stage early in the 1942 productions of Life, Laughter, and Tears, and The Patriots. In high school, she began adding a few more feathers to her cap by studying dance and working as a model. She majored in dance and theater at Reed College in Portland and then Barmore Junior College in New York. One of Hope's first major roles was in the 1956 film Bus Stop. Her career continued to thrive after it. She earned roles in 16 other films. They included her Golden Globe and Academy Award-nominated performance in Peyton Place and 1974's Death Wish. Hope then moved to TV, and the most famous show she appeared in was The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. She admitted in magazine interviews that she wasn't confident in its ability to succeed at first. She didn't think there would be enough substance in the scripts. But then she saw the first four and realized there was. Her work earned her two Emmys for lead actress in a comedy series. The actress charmed the world and her co-stars. Her first marriage was to Don Murray, whom she met while filming Bus Stop in 1956. They had two children, Christopher and Patricia Murray. She divorced Don in 1961. She then had a four-year relationship with actor Glenn Ford, although they never married. Hope left acting for three years after marrying Alan Pakula on October 19, 1963. They were divorced in 1971. She dated Frank Sinatra and John Cheever, and then eventually married Charles Hollerith Jr., whom she stayed with for the rest of her life. She died at age 70, December 19, 2003, of ischemic colitis infection from lung cancer. Edward Moller Edward Moller was born on April 8, 1923, in Cork, Ireland. He spent most of his life training in medicine before he decided to dedicate his life to acting. He performed in local venues before moving to London for more opportunities. That's where he met and got to work with major names like Orson Welles and John Gielgud. He also performed on stage in My Fair Lady. In a twist of fate, he took over for Rex Harrison, who played Captain Gregg in the original The Ghost and Mrs. Muir film. Edward made his film debut in Hill 24 Doesn't Answer in 1955. His film work in the 60s included Von Ryan's Express, Our Man Flynn, and Caprice. He played Captain Gregg in The Ghost and Mrs. Muir throughout the end of the 60s. Roles after that included the original Knight Rider and the 1997 film Out to Sea. He died of lung cancer at age 74 on May 24, 1997. He was never married or even romantically linked to anyone and had no children to survive him. Charles Nelson Riley Charles Nelson Riley was born January 13, 1931 in the Bronx. When he was 13, he was almost scared away from performing forever. He was one of the few survivors of the 1944 Hartford Circus Fire that claimed 167 lives. There was a period of his life when he refused to go to the theater or sit in an audience. Once he overcame his fears, he did become interested in opera but realized he didn't have the vocal ability. Instead, he found other ways to get on stage. These included roles in the 1960 production of Bye Bye Birdie, as well as the 1961 production of How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. He got a Tony nomination for his work on the production of Hello, Dolly! in 1964. Charles never lost his love for the stage, and he did find other roles. He was the greedy landlord Claymore Gregg in The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. He also made frequent appearances on game shows, particularly Match Game and Hollywood Squares. His final stage performance was The Gin Game in 1997, and his final TV appearances were on episodes of The Drew Carey Show. His final film work was in the adaptation of the one-man show The Life of Riley in 2007. Riley died at age 76, May 25, 2007, due to complications from pneumonia. 
Rita Shaw. Rita Shaw was born September 13, 1912, in South Paris, Maine. She made her Broadway debut in the 1947 production of It Takes Two. That helped her earn roles in several other stage productions, including The Pajama Game, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Picnic, and Annie Get Your Gun. Rita also extended her career to the big and small screen. As well as playing housekeeper Martha Shaw in The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, She also appeared in Mary Poppins, Pollyanna, The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, Bachelor in Paradise, and Escape to Witch Mountain. Rita died at the age of 69 on January 8, 1982, due to complications from emphysema. Helen Carraher and Kelly Flanagan These two played the children in The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. They added life and comedy to the show, and they're now the only surviving members of the cast. Kelly's first appearance was as the blonde girl in the Star Trek The Original Series episode, Miri. She then appeared as Candy in The Ghost and Mrs. Muir for two seasons. She essentially left the business in the 70s, but has been credited as a producer on the 1993 miniseries The Wild West and the 1994 Civil War Journal series. Harlan made guest appearances on shows like Bracken's World, Emergency, and The Brady Bunch. He has since moved his focus away from acting, graduating from the University of Southern California with a degree in civil engineering in 1986. He works for the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety and lives in Silver Lake, California. Kelly's 1989 interview The last time fans heard anything major from Kelly Flanagan was in a Where Are They Now special in a September 4, 1989 issue of Us Magazine. She was working in Venice, California and running her own videotaping company, Strictly Video Productions. The interview gave her a chance to talk about her time on the show as well as other roles. Kelly said her life alternated between busy, exciting, and blissfully quiet. She and her husband lived alone because their daughter was in college. They had land near Yosemite National Park filled with roosters, dogs, cats, and geckos. When she wasn't tending to them, she enjoyed ceramics, beading, and reading. She was also managing editor of Sierra News Online. She recorded a radio segment for kryzradio.org every week. When asked how she landed the role of blonde girl in Star Trek, she said it was thanks to her agent, Dorothy Day Otis. She'd already gotten a few commercials and print work before they worked together to get on screen. She said the most memorable part of that famous episode was working with all the other children on set. She remembers it as just one big play week and said nothing ever felt the same way. She also has nothing but positive things to say about her time on The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. It was as much fun for her at the time as her work on Star Trek, but there's a reason why it was her last major credit. Her mother, a major force in her career, passed away before she turned 11. Her older siblings took over as her guardian and asked if she wanted to continue acting. She said no and went back to school in sixth grade. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite classic supernatural sitcom? Did you watch The Ghost and Mrs. Muir? Let us know in the comments section below.